and welcome again to The Conservative Historian. Today's edition, Law and Order. I wanted to start with a time in the past, 3,500 years ago, or 1,500 BCE, the kingdom Babylonia and the ruler Hammurabi. Now Hammurabi is known to many American school children because in the world culture classes he's often mentioned. And he is famous because he was one of the first kings of ancient time to codify his laws. So why is this so important? Because rulers normally can rule by arbitrariness. One week I feel this way, so I'm going to do it that way. One week I feel a different way, so I'm going to do it this way. What Hammurabi did by codifying his laws by publishing them, if you will, though stone was as the medium of the time, not paper and not bits and bytes. What he did was is to actually put the law above himself. Now if Hammurabi, as the king, he could change those laws, but if he did so, he now had an argument on his hands. If he changed them arbitrarily, he might seem to be weak. Thus, the law gained precedent over the ruler. And this is incredibly important in this society. Dictators, authoritarian rulers, emperors, kings, or even commissars exist because they can arbitrarily change things for their people. But when the law exists above that ruler, as is what Hammurabi did, then that changes the dynamic of society unto itself. Now, one of the interesting things about the Code of Hammurabi is, is what we would call a penal law. In other words, there's a penalty for it. Hammurabi's penalties were pretty harsh. If you killed somebody, you could be killed. If you stole something, you could lose a hand. In other words, there is the crime and there is the punishment, the penalty. Hence, penal law. Now, there was about 200 years later, a different law code came into existence. Though it was not a penal code, it was based on morality. It's something pretty much everybody has encountered. And that is the Ten Commandments, which later emanated into what is called the Mosaic Code. Now the first three commandments out of the ten primarily have to do with an individual's relationship with God. But the next seven have to do with everyday matters. They have to do with theft, they have to do with adultery, and so forth and so on. The difference between the Code of Hammurabi and the Mosaic Code is one of penalty versus morality. In the Mosaic Code, thou shalt not steal, period, done. Not thou shalt not steal and then thine shall lose a hand. No, just don't do it. The other interesting thing with the Mosaic Code is, is that there is a corollary towards what you shouldn't do and what you think you should not do. There is, thou shalt not steal, but thou shalt also not covet thy neighbor's possessions. In other words, the act of stealing begins with the thought. Not just, I'm going to take my neighbor's, uh, uh, maybe his cattle or his wheat harvest. No, in thinking about it. And even that is a negative in the Mosaic Code. But again, no fundamental penalty. Now, in the U.S., the United States is fortunately a nation of laws. We can look them up and find them. Part of our challenge today is the number of laws. The Federal Registry is tens of thousands of pages long. So, more than likely, even making this recording, I might be violating some statute or some business law. So, one of the things that's very important about laws is, is that they shouldn't become so numerous that only having a phalanx of lawyers could I possibly understand all of the laws and all of the permutations. And, not shockingly, one of the great uh, progenitors or creators of the Federal Registry and all of these laws was the Obama administration. The Trump administration, to its credit, has actually tried to cut back and has succeeded in destroying 
but thousands of pages of these Federal Registry laws are eliminating them from the books. But the problem, of course, with that is, is that there's still tens of thousands that exist. These bureaucracies in the executive branch exist to write all of these laws. Congress has fundamentally abrogated the writing of laws, which is one of the reasons why they're so, uh, why they permeated so much. That's a problem. But to the greater degree of that Hammurabi Code versus the Mosaic Code, is, is that you can't have one without the other. Let me repeat that. You can't have one without the other. If I were to be able to, let's say, murder somebody, and I knew nobody would know about it, the perfect crime, the point of the Mosaic Code is I still shouldn't do it. The point of the, uh, the Code of Hammurabi is, well, yeah, I'm going to get penalized, but only if I get caught. As I'm recording this, two crimes, not equitable, but two crimes have been committed. The first was is that those very individuals who are supposed to enforce the law, the police officers, in this case, uh, one particular officer in the state of Minnesota, killed an unarmed black man named George Floyd. This was basically a heinous uh, crime, and from all points of evidence, it sure looks like murder. The second crime was a reaction to that, rioting and looting, and mostly peaceful demonstrations turning violent. That's a negative too. Now they're not equitable, and nor are they in the law. Murder carries a very significant and steep penalty, far more egregious penalty than you will ever see with simply rioting or looting a store. But the point is, is that there are penalties for that, and there should be, definitely should be for those police officers who cross that line, as it appears happens in this case, but also for those people who cross the line. There is a law that says that you cannot steal, and if you steal, there are repercussions. That exists regardless of the ideology or regardless of the amount of anger within any given community. That is still a violation of the law too. But even before that, in the hearts of human beings, it says that thou shalt not kill, and thou shalt not steal, and thou shalt not think about those kinds of things. To think about it starts to make the doable accessible. Therefore, laws should be codified so that they exist above government for all of our own protection, too. Those laws should not be so numerous that an individual can't understand all of the laws that exist that affect them as individuals. And three, the laws should be penalized. There should be that law of morality that says that I'm not going to do this act not because I'm not going to get caught, but because it is wrong. Thank you.